Hello, biology students. So we're talking about uh, biology, but we also need to know a little bit of chemistry here. Excuse me. And what I'm going to do right now is a little demonstration of a chemical reaction between two substances. The first substance is C12H22O11. That's just table sugar, that's sucrose. And notice the components that you have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And these are bonded together in a certain way to form what we know as table sugar. Uh, the other substance right here, this liquid, is a, a fairly dangerous substance called sulfuric acid. Uh, again, we have hydrogen and oxygen. This time we have some sulfur in there, and I will be using caution. It is uh, fairly dangerous. There's a very concentrated acid right here. Uh, and all I'm really going to do is mix them together, and a chemical reaction will take place. I'll talk a little as it happens. Now, I am going to add just a bit of water to the sugar first. It sort of helps things out a little to get rolling. Safety goggles, of course. Okay. And let's take our acid, carefully pour it into the sugar. I'm going to just give it a stir. You can see some action already. Okay. Now what's happening is the sugar molecules are actually breaking apart. We have the atoms of the sugar, um, the carbons, the hydrogens, the oxygen separating from each other. And as that happens, Different substances are going to form. This takes a little bit to get going, so just keep watching. You can see an immediate change already. We had white crystals and a clear liquid, and now we have kind of a, what's a black, goopy liquid. And what's going to happen is as this reaction gets going more and more and more, water is actually being removed from the sugar. Remember, you had CH22O11, C12H22O11. And you can see some steam coming off. That is your water. And it's actually disappearing from the uh, compound and leaving behind it this black material. Now, part of science is observing. And so you can see all sorts of things. I'm observing the steam. The steam implies that there's heat. And there actually is. If I touch it, it's actually pretty hot. And then we have the carbon. Uh, and you can smell it that it smells a little bit like caramel or burnt marshmallows here. And so what we've had happen is a chemical reaction, and we have new products. That's a key. You have something new. Chemical reactions produce something that wasn't present before. Uh, and in this case, that was water, which largely disappeared as steam, although there's actually some in here as well. Some stays in liquid form with some, uh, some of the sul sulfur still in it. And then this is carbon. This is, uh, when you burn a marshmallow, that's really what you're left with, is that certain, I think it's gross, kind of carbon taste that I wouldn't want to eat. Some, some of you I know like that. And that's what this is. I can uh, carefully, Ugh. yeah, okay, I can't do it. It's actually too hot to touch. And that's another key here, is that energy, sugar has energy. You know that. You eat too much of it, and you're running around like crazy. Uh, or you just feel wired. Well, the sugar has energy, and a lot of that was just released in the form of heat. And so that's another aspect of chemical reactions that are important. Uh, that energy can actually either be released like that, or you could end up with products, that's what you end up with at the end, that have more energy. So they store up energy. So that's something to keep in mind as we move forward and look at uh, chemical reactions. Please, as you watch the lectures on chemical reactions, they're going to be rather brief, but uh, take some notes, ask questions if you're confused, as always. All right, great. We'll see you in the lectures. Bye.